Hello and welcome to another Scardcast review video. This is Psychic Awakening, The Greater Good. In the first video, we went over Tao, so make sure you check that in the links down below. The second book is going to be, or the second part of the book, or the second video, is going to be the Astra Militarum. So without further ado, let's dive right in. The Astra Militarum, also known as the Imperial Guard. If you haven't, don't know already, I own a Talarn Guard, Astra Militarum Regiment, and I recently took them on a creative competitive stint where I went to three or four tournaments with them. I made a whole video about it. If you want to watch that, check the link in the description down below. And it's really cool to see the Astro Militarum getting some love. Now, the Astro Militarum made out big in this publication, in my opinion. I think they got, um, you know, they got their ability to make their own company, which is great, their own uh, sort of like regiment doctrines, which is nice. They got some cool stratagems as well. They got rules for tank aces. Mm, however, Games Workshop went ahead and really fleshed out the rules for the Tempestor Scions, which I think is awesome. Giving them regimental rules, extra stratagems, relics, warlord traits, all this cool stuff. If you want to run an entire detachment or an entire army of simply elite drop troop commandos, then this will be uh, something that you can do with this book. I'm very excited about it, so let's dive right in. The Hammer of the Imperium, of course, with great name generators like Dan's... Oh, they're Cadians, Catachans, Valhallans, Vestroyans. Oh, man, they didn't put any Talar in there. But Catachan, Boss Stransky, or Valhallan Boris, or uh, <laughs> Vestroyan Ethsmar. You know, great names. I love it. If you're looking for some cool names for your company commanders. So you've got the name generator, regimental doctrines, mix and match. Tank aces. Oh, there's some really good ones in there. Really good ones. Reminds me of the old Forge World tank aces when you had like a tank company. And you could have like your tank aces were the elite choices. And it's really cool that they're making a comeback in Psychic Awakening. Some cool stratagems. And of course, the Ordo Tempestus crazy elite drop commandos, which is really awesome. Okay, let's dive into the regimental doctrines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So one more than the Tau. Now, a lot of them are similar to what you see in the other books. However, it's kind of neat that you can sort of mix and match. If you're going to make your own regiment, you don't really care about Catachans or Cadians or Valhallans or Vestroyans or Talarn. You just go, you know what? I want to run my own thing. I'm from my own planet called Earth, and Earth uh, Guardsmen are better than other Guardsmen. Okay, fine. So you get to pick two of these, and... Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, as well as describing the abilities... One of these... Gain. One of these abilities... Doctrines. Huh? Oh, okay, never mind. So you get to pick one of them, not two, just one. Interesting. So you don't get to pick two. And with the Tau, did I mess that up with the Tau? I don't, I hope not. I hope I didn't mess it up with the Tau. If I did, I'm going to have to go back. Ah! Oh, no, two rules. Okay, so you can pick two there. Ah! Okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> good. Good, did I mess that up? Oh no, you can pick two. Okay, woo! Had a little bit of a brain fart there. So, gunnery experts, um, re-roll, when you roll to determine the character, the type, so heavy d6, whatever, you can re-roll one of the dice, so it's like a catachin style rule. Uh, spotter details, add six inches to the range of heavy weapons with a range of at least 24 inches, so you can extra extra range. That's cool. Discipline shootings. When an infantry model shoots with a rapid-fire weapon against a unit that is within 18, double the number of attacks that weapon makes rather than the following. There are normal rules of rapid-fire weapons. Okay, so they rapid-fire within 18, technically. However, if they rapid-fire two, then they make four shots at 18 with first-rank fire, second-rank fire, which is pretty awesome. However, it is rapid-fire weapons, so plasma would fall into that category, plasma guns. Fire from the hip can shoot rapid-fire weapons even if they advance, but they're minus one hit, so a little less good than the Talarn one, which is just advance and shoot normally, which is cool. 
combined all specs, um, an Overwatch made by a vehicle within three inches of another vehicle is a five plus to hit with Overwatch. Very dangerous. If you're clumping up your vehicles as an Astro Militarum Regiment, you're going to get everyone touched in combat and it's going to be a very bad day for you. So that's uh, very risky. Unless, of course, you're running like a giant like Bane Blade or something, and you're like, look, this Bane Blade is within three inches of another regiment vehicle that's behind said Bane Blade, so it just, it just has defensive gunners all the time. Uh, that's not bad, actually. That's kind of cool. Agile Warriors. When an infantry unit advances, reroll, advance roll. Makes them fast. Cool. Uh, Pyromaniacs. When resolving an attack made with a flamer, heavy flamer, or twin heavy flamer, uh, reroll wound rolls of one. Kind of neat. So you could have like a detachment of just hell... Um, of the little hell hammers or whatever they're called. Oh my goodness. You know what I mean. Just put it in the links down below. Be like, in the comments, be like, hey, Skari, you mean hellhound. There you go. <laughs> See, it was on the tip of my tongue. Wilderness survivors, when it, uh, an attack made with a ranged weapon against an infantry unit, if the, the unit did not advance, it's treated as receiving benefits of cover. So infantry gets cover if it didn't advance. Cool, that's not bad. Jury rigged repairs. Uh, roll a d6 for every vehicle in your army with the doctrine that has lost a wound. On a 2 to 4, it gains 1. On a 5 plus, it gains d3. So it's like an auto heal. That's not bad. Uh, Lord, if you're, especially if you're running like a huge armored company. Lord's approval. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a regiment infantry model uh, within 9 inches of an officer, improve the AP by 1. That's not bad. So AP1 in close combat, pretty neat if you're within nine of officers. Monster Hunters, when resolving an attack made with a heavy weapon against a monster, an unmodified wound of a six inflicts a mortal wound in addition to damage. Okay, and then Slum Fighters. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by an infantry model, an unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. Cool, so there's some really cool flavorful ones in there. Are they better than the actual regiments that you get in there? Well, okay, you could do like a Cadian thing and mix it with like the extra range one. I mean, a Cadian thing mixed with range one. The combined all specs I think is kind of cool if you're running a regiment of like super heavy tanks so that they overwatch better all the time. I think that's pretty neat. Then we have tank aces. Now, tank ace rules I really like. Now, the way it works is if you have an Astro Militarum character as your Warlord, rather than determining a Warlord trait for the model, you can instead select one tank ace from a for a vehicle model from your army. Before the battle begins, select a vehicle without the Brood Brothers rule, so no, no, not for Gene Steeler cults, and select a tank ace ability from the corresponding list. Each tank case has a specific vehicle type that it essentially runs into. So you could do main battle tanks, supports, or super heavy aces. So you have three different types of aces. You also get, um, uh, if you have one Astro Militarum character in your army, doesn't have to be, so in your, like if you just have an Astro Militarum character in your army, you get the tank case stratagem, which is one command point. You can use it once per game, once per battle, sorry, to give one of your tanks a tank case but if you don't take a world trait you can pick one and then you can always spend a cp to pick another one so you could have two tank aces and you could mix and match i, I believe um uh you can't have a model uh, named characters can't be given tank ace abilities no model can have more than one tank ace ability however i believe you can have two different abilities so i mean you can have the same ability twice if you wanted to which is kind of cool so let's start with main battle tank aces um, if it's a vehicle and has a Lehman Rust keyword, then in addition, you can select the tank ace. So it can be a master mechanic. Um, so reduce damage by one to minimum one for that vehicle. Pretty cool. That's for Lehman Rusts. Slow and purposeful in your shooting phase when resolving an attack made by this model. If it did not move or moved less than half. Um, reroll wounds of one. So it has a built-in reroll ones to wound. That's pretty good as well. Weapons expert. Improve the AP of the turret weapon by one. So makes your battle cannon minus three. Okay, makes your Gatling super cannon, the super mega Gatling cannon Punisher tank, AP one, which can be pretty huge, for example. Armored rush in your shooting phase. This model can shoot with turret weapons, even if it advanced. So essentially it can move super fast 
and still shoot its turret weapons. If you need like a super speedy Lehman Russ, that's for you. Up armored uh, gives it a two plus armor save. That's pretty snazzy. It means that if he's in cover, it has a one plus save. Really helps it a lot against a lot of great anti-tank weaponry out there as well. Steel commander, tank commander model only. You can issue an additional tank order each turn. Kind of cool. The ones I like the most are probably the up armored one. I think I really like that one. And I really like the reroll ones to wound and the AP one, which I think is really neat. Um, yeah, the damage one's pretty interesting as well. However, most people just volume of fire you to death instead of physically doing damage, damage to you. The second type of tank ace are supporting aces. So if it's a vehicle and has basilisk, quiver, and hydromantic or a death strike. So these are for your artillery pieces. So first you have the full payload, and this is probably full payload. This is probably my absolute favorite. Do not roll to determine the damage of weapons this model is equipped with. They have their maximum value. So it works on a basilisk, so instead of D3 damage, it just becomes three damage. Um, Wyverns don't have damage. They have one damage, it doesn't matter. Hydras have one, two damage, it doesn't matter. Manticore, D3 damage, boom. And then the Death Strike missile, I don't know if that does damage. However, it's max damage. So when it goes off, it just goes off at max damage, which I think is amazing. I love it for a Basilisk. Just put a Basilisk in the back, it's like having a second Hammer of Sundrance. And that is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And combined with some of the cool stratagems we'll see later, this is one of the tank, the tank aces I think you're going to see all the time. Shatter of, shatterer of Will, in the shooting phase after you have resolved all of your attacks made by this model, select one enemy unit that any of these attacks score to hit against until the end of the turn, subtract two from the leadership. So, cool, any leadership-based shenanigans, you know uh, if you've been watching me for long enough, you know it's very up in the air, maybe, maybe not, so you never really know what's going to happen with that as well. And then we have well-stocked magazines. I love this one from my Wyvern. When rolling to determine the type of ranged weapon this model is equipped with, you can re-roll any or all of the dice, which is awesome. So I, you know, 4d6 pick like and pick up any and or all the dice if you want to re-roll them. Just makes your random shot weapon very effective at shooting stuff, which is really neat. And I like the max damage for a basilisk especially because it's a very efficient shooting weapon, which is neat. And last but not least. Super heavy aces. So if you weren't terrified enough by shadow sword tanks and stuff like that, why not bring a elite shadow sword tank or an elite bane hammer like I've been putting in my list, but now I can make him a tank ace, which is cool. Inspiring might, when a morale test is taken for friendly models within six, uh, roll an additional dice and discard one of them. Okay, fancy, just inspiring. Kind of does what a commissar tank does almost. Hull down deployment. This model receives the benefit of cover until the first time it moves. I think that's really good because every time you can put your big tank in cover and give it a two up save and then you can cast plus one save to it so it's a one up save and then you can cast minus one to hit on it. Makes it very hard to kill, right? Which is awesome. And then you have Steadfast Leviathan. If your army is Battleforged, this model gains the regimental doctrine even if it's in a super heavy auxiliary detachment. That I kind of like. means you can take it in a super heavy auxiliary detachment and it gains a regimental, like its regiment keyword. However, if you wanted to do something cool like give it like a, a, a custom regiment that affects it specifically and, and then not have to take the rest of your army as that regiment, you can make it a tank ace and get your regiment keyword even if it's off to the side in its own sort of like detachment. Personally, I run my Super Heavy in a Supreme Command detachment, which means he gets the regimental keyword anyway. So, less that, but I do like that cover one. So, my favorites would have to be the full damage for Basilisk or Manticore, the uh, hull down deployment for the always being cover, essentially, and of course, uh, probably the uh, two up save or the uh, reroll ones to wound for um, the, ten the Lehman Russes. And then we have stratagems so we have 14 different stratagems and i really like these i'm gonna tell you what my favorite one is my favorite one is um 
Is this it? Yes. Deft maneuvering. At the start, in your opponent shooting... No, no, that's not it. Nope, that's not it either. <laughs> it's one that I know. Strike first, strike hard. There you go. Because I normally run a little unit of three armored sentinels with rocket launchers and hunter-killer missiles. And they're great. They're a cool little cheap unit that you kind of run up, and they point at a tank and go, okay, gung's ho. And normally it's a big Hail Mary shot. Be like, can I kill a tank with this little like unit of sentinels before they have to go and be like... Uh, you know, uh, and a nuisance to my opponent. But this really helps them. It's like they read my mind. Uh, in your shooting phase of the first battle round, so for in the first shooting phase that you have, when an armored sentinel or scout sentinel is chosen to shoot with, until the end of the phase, when resolving an attack made with a model in the unit, add two to the hit roll. So they hit on twos. Amazing. Amazing. And Talarn sentinels can move and shoot heavy weapons without penalty. So it means that those rockets and hunter killers in that first turn, it's like a little alpha strike with those sentinels. I love it. I think it's so characterful. I don't know why I like that stratagem so much, but it's cool. And I like it. Uh, so we have a Relentless. So let's kind of go down the line. One vehicle, except for Titanic, uh, has damage table until the end of that turn. Model uses the top row of its damage table regardless of how many wounds it has lost. So one CP act at top profile. However, they it's not for Titanic sadly. Direct onslaught. Use this in the shooting phase when a manticore or wyvern is shooting until the phase when may when shooting with its quad mortar or with its eagle rockets uh, against a unit that is visible add one to the hit roll. So plus one to hit if you're shooting at something visible to you. Okay, not bad. I kind of like that for the wyvern a lot because you know hitting on threes with a bunch of shots is really cool. Experienced eye. Use this in your shooting phase when a Astromotarum veteran unit from your army is chosen to shoot. Until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a weapon in the unit, improve the AP by one. So it's a little way of giving like ignore cover in its own way. Really good with plasma guns. So, you know, it gives them an extra AP, AP4. And then, you know, but who uses veterans other than Reese? You know, he uses Talar and veterans with plasma guns. I know if you're a veteran user, tell me to shut up and put a comment down below. Say, hey, Skari, I use veterans all the time. Furious Charge. Use a stratagem when an Ogren unit from your army finishes a charge move. For each model in that unit, select an enemy unit with one inch, and then on a four plus, one mortal wound. So it's another mortal wound strap but for regular Ogrens. Okay. Nobody really uses Ogrens. Once again, if you do, send a comment down below and tell me that I'm silly and that I should, not, uh, should shut up and not say stuff like this. Splash Damage. Hellhound. So one for the hellhounds out there. See? I knew I knew the word. Uh, until the end of the phase when resolving attack made with one of its guns, like its main gun, uh, against a unit that is receiving the benefit of cover, you can reroll wound rolls. That's kind of cool, actually. Here, you want to hide in a forest? Here, take a bunch of reroll wounds. For one CP, is not bad. Concentrated fire is for heavy weapon squads. Uh, if it's chosen to shoot with, select an enemy unit. Until the end of that phase, attacks made by models in that heavy weapon squad unit must target that enemy unit. And when resolving those attacks, add one to hit and wound for any attacks made with a weapon from the heavy weapons list, blah, blah, etc. So for one CP, you can give them plus one to hit, plus one to wound on a heavy weapon squad. Great if you have like a mortar team. Mortar team, plus one to hit, plus one to wound, said unit. That's kind of neat, actually. I kind of like that. It, you know, mortars did go up in points. It's kind of neat to have them or have like three last cannons and be like, hey, a plus one hit, plus one wound with like three last cannons. Not bad. Then again, heavy weapon teams die if they're out in the open. Believe me, I know. So mortars are probably what you're going to see this used with because they can hide. Not from Thunderfire cannons or Wyverns or Hive Guard or planes that can get around the terrain or other artillery or needless to say, they usually die pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> uh, shield of Flesh is the one they previewed. Bullgrin can basically be a shield wall for infantry units within three inches of them, uh, giving that unit minus one to hit, which is pretty cool. And it's any friendly unit, so um, which is pretty neat. I kind of like that. It's any infantry unit they can support. So if you have like a space marine unit within three inches, the Bullgrin can be like, Minus one to hit them. Yay. Combine that with like Raven guarding cover. And now it's minus two to hit them or something. It could be kind of interesting. Cool little combos. Then we have Hail of Fire. In your shooting phase, when the Lehman Rust model from your army it chooses to shoot until the end of that phase, 
when resolving an attack uh, made with a weapon that against a vehicle. Do not roll to determine the type. It has the maximum value. Ooh, I like that. So if you're shooting against a vehicle with your Lehman Russ for two command points, you have maximum value. So I can see the Hammer of Sundrance, which has been the relic that you see all the time, with a Hail of Fire. All of a sudden you have Hammer of Sundrance, Hail of Fire. That's 12 shots directed right at a vehicle. And then you can make sure that he has real ones to hit for his tank order. And then if he moved less than half his movement, which he does to shoot twice, then he's real ones to wound as well. So I'm seeing some cool combos. That's pretty neat. Or if it's a demolisher cannon. Ugh. Ugh. Demolishers are terrifying. That'd be 12 demolisher hits. Oh, God. That's awesome. Uh, rolling death. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a Torox model is chosen to shoot with. Until the end of the phase, when an attack made by, is made by this model, if that model moved less than half, uh, you can add one to hit. So you get plus one hit on a Torox model if it moves slow. Okay. I don't use Toroxes, so cool. Head first. Uh, use it in the charge phase when a unit from army is chosen to charge with. Until the end of that phase, if that unit disembarked from a Chimera this turn, when making a charge roll, add two to the result. So I guess that would work really well um, you know, would work really well for like a unit of Bulgrin or Ogrin charging out of a Chimera, I guess, you know, you, you, sure, gives them an extra two to charge, decent for one CP. Focused Bombardment, use this in the shooting phase when a Master of Ordnance is chosen to shoot with. The artillery barrage they have is just heavy six. I love the Master Ordnance, however, he has like a minimum range ability. So I took him out of my list early on in the development of my list. However, being able to just say, hey, this is like a heavy six artillery barrage, I think that's pretty cool. Um, you know, especially if you're trying to do some counter artillery firepower, be like, hey, is that your Thunderfire Cannon? Well, six artillery bombardment shots at you. You know, I think that's pretty neat. Deft maneuvering for a armored Sentinel unit. Uh, it halves any damage on, in your opponent's shooting phase. So it makes your armored sentinels really tough to deal with. That's pretty cool. I like that. Half damage can be really good for those sentinels. And last but not least, Psychic Conclave. A very interesting stratagem. So you select a Weird Vein Psycho unit and a friendly Primera Psycho unit within six inches of each other. Until the end of the phase, um, you add two to all the Psychic tests for both units. And in addition... Uh, you can attempt to manifest an additional psychic power. So each unit gets two psychic powers and you add plus two to each roll. So for one command point, you have like, you du you double your psychic support and you make it a lot easier to cast psychic powers. I really like this one and it, well, it does make you take the word vein psychers. So, you know, they're not a unit you see very often. However, that's pretty interesting. Kind of like that one. It's like a, a Farseer sort of like get together with the Farseer stuff. Then we get into the nitty-gritty of the Ordo Tempestus. Tempestus Scions are really cool. Uh, they went down in points in Chapter Approved. They're elite commandos that drop in low altitude, halo drop style, armed to the teeth with special weapons and be the best armor that the guard can get together. And uh, they've, they, they're, like, they're like regimental sort of... Um, uh, units that you can add into any regiment, which is kind of cool. However, they've given them um, one, well, they have one rule, one, two, three, four, five, six. So they have eight different ways you can play them, which is awesome. And they each have their own regimental rules. And I love it. I think this is fantastic. Um, so the doctrines they get, you have the Stormtrooper Doctrine from the basic Astromatar book. That doesn't change. Then you have d uh, these guys here. So they previewed a few of them on the page. But if you kill models in the shooting phase, each model you kill counts as two for morale tests. Okay, that, that's, as always, anything that's morale-based is very hit or miss, in my opinion. Predatory strike. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon with this doctrine against a unit that is within half range, an unmodified roll of six scores one additional hit. Works really well with the combination of their, uh, their, their Tempestus um, order and some of the stratagems and things they can do, which would then give them multiple hits on sixes, which is cool. Um, prized weaponry, improve the AP of weapons by one. So that's 
both close combat and shooting. So their cool little guns become AP3, which is awesome. Uh, plasma guns become extra AP. Also, all their close combat weapons become AP1, and that's pretty awesome as well. Crack shots uh, six, add 6-inch six range to rapid fire weapons with this doctrine, which is really powerful because their basic last gun, like the hot shot last gun, is an 18-inch range. So when you drop down, you can't rapid fire. However, having an extra 6-inch range now allows them to rapid fire within half range. When they drop down, so you can have giant units of 10 with a whole bunch of really powerful, like, high AP last gun firepower, essentially, and can really do a scary amount of damage. Uh, so I really like the extra range one, which is really cool. Um, mobilized infantry. Uh, infantry units do not suffer penalty for moving and fire heavy weapons. And when resolving an attack made um, in a turn in which it disembarked from a transport, you add plus one to hit. That's really cool if you're using uh, the Valkyrie drop uh, drop rules from Vigilus and you have a bunch of heavy weapons in there, which is mostly their like special heavy super volley hotshot last gun. I think they're heavy weapons. And, of course, another plus one to hit. You add plus one to hit, which then combos well with their order, their stratagem, that gives them additional hits and stuff on sixes, and you can add to hit rolls so they get more hits easily, essentially. I think that's really cool. So it's like exploding dice when you run them out of uh, transports. And then you have resolute heroism. Uh, when resolving attack made by an infantry model with a ranged weapon against the closest unit, an unmodified roll of a six scores one additional hit. So it's very similar. There's lots of like extra hits, extra hits, extra hits, which kind of messes with the math in a way, and that's pretty cool. Okay. <clears throat> then we have a couple of relics. So they get each of the different strat um, regiments gets a relic, which is interesting. You you have there four of them are weapons. So this is a chainsword relic. It's a two damage plus one strength chainsword that makes three additional attacks. And against Eldari, you can reroll wounds. So if you don't like Eldar in your meta, then take this. It will kill um, lots of shining spears because they're two wounds apiece. Then the fire of judgment, a lot hot shot last pistol. It is a 12 inch pistol that's two shots. When resolving an attack made with this weapon, a successful hit inflicts a mortal wound on the target, and the attack ends. So two hits basically can do two mortal wounds. I kind of like that one. That's not bad. Just quick, like, oh, I hit you, two mortal wounds. That's it. Or two shots, two mortal wounds, done. And if you... That's neat, actually. I like that. Third, Lambian Lions. Uh, friendly models have a five of vulnerable save within six. Cool. So you can have like an invulnerable save on all your cheap infantry. If it's per model though, not per units, so they have to be really close to each other. Emperor's Fury, a plasma pistol relic, and it has a standard of supercharge. It's twelve inches. It's three shots each. Cool. Regular plasma rules, and it will kill you. It's a three-shot plasma pistol. <laughs> okay. That's very dangerous plasma pistol. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. But remember, you can add plus one to your hit rolls. So it was some of these. Oh, wait. Which one is that? The Iodin Dragoons. Uh, no, they do not get the plus one to hit. Okay. Never mind. Distraction charges. When resolving an Overwatch attack. This is probably one of my favorites. When resolving an Overwatch attack made by a friendly eagle model like the Capic, uh, the Capic eagle models within three inches of a model with this relic if the attack scores a hit the target is slowed until the end of the phase when a charge roll is made for a slowed unit halve the result rounding up this is incredibly powerful because if you have them on a flank or whatever like halving a charge roll is crazy it means that it's physically impossible to charge you if you're like seven inches away so they can hold a flank off against deep strikers. They can make it really hard for you know fast moving assault units to get into your line if they're properly positioned. And it's any unit within three inches of this model. So you can kind of string out the model. And if you just hit, right? That's it. That's all you need to do is hit. And you've got rapid fire guns or guns with lots of weapons. And that's the, the Capic Eagles, which have one of the coolest ones, which is the penal no penalty for moving and shooting heavy weapons, and they're in the transports, so when they get out of transports. I love this relic. Anything that changes movement can win you games. So read this relic, and if it works for you, that's awesome. Then we have the Blessed Bolt Gun. It replaces a bolt gun. It's a one-shot, two-damage strength, five bolt gun. It's only 12 inches, though. 
Uh, it can target characters, and whilst resolving an attack against psychers, it has damage of three instead of two. So it's a 12-inch sniper bolt gun. Interesting. Cool. Except it's really dangerous against, uh, against psychers. Then we have a Militarum Tempestus Warlord traits. So each one for a different regiment, right? So you get uh, the start of the first battle round before the first turn, select up to three jackal units from your army, remove them from the battlefield, set them up as described in the deployment section, um, and roll off. Yeah, so you can redeploy. Cool. So they can have a redeploy stratagem, which is neat. Um, when resolving an attack made with a hotshot last gun, hotshot last pistol, or hotshot volley gun by a friendly unit within six inches of the warlord, an unmodified wound of a six has AP of four. That's pretty cool. What's their special rule? Um, unmodified hit of a six scores one additional hit. So more hits and then wounds are, have better AP, which is pretty awesome. Keys to the armory. Reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made with ranged weapons by models and friendly Lambian lions within six inches of warlord. So he gives them reroll ones to hit. Now that's pretty cool. And they all have an AP of extra AP of one. So that's really good. I love that one because it also works in... Uh, the AP works in close combat. This is only for ranged weapons. But rerolling ones is amazing. That helps vehicles. That helps, you know, the like any any of their dragoon, like any if you're running like a spam list of a bunch of little uh like the little tanks. Yep. That's cool. Precision targeting. At the start of your shooting phase, select an enemy unit with an 18 of the warlord. Until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a friendly dragoon model within six inches of the warlord, that enemy unit does not receive benefit of cover. So that's cool. Anything that stops cover is neat. But you can also do that with your astropaths. They, it's basically the same rule. An astropath, not an astropath. Um, yeah, an astropath, not a primary psychic. So an astropath can pick an enemy unit within 18, and then all units within six, the shooting of that unit, ignore cover. So, sneaky, but useful. Master Vox. When using this warlord's command voice ability, it can issue orders to friendly eagle infantry units within 24. In addition, um, whilst it's embarked in a transport, it can still use voice of command. When doing so, make any measurements from the transport's hull. So it has a 24 inch, and these are the Capic Eagles, which are quickly becoming one of my favorite. They have the coolest relic in my opinion. They have a really neat uh, plus one hit when they disembark. So they're very good alpha strikey. And then they're, you can have one commander give orders within 24. I love it. And then combine that with the relic, you know, the laurels of command or something, and you can give like multiple orders to the same unit. It's pretty neat. Uh, Sanctity of Spirit. Uh, the When a psychic test is taken within 24, that model suffers perils on roll of any double. Cool, an anti-psycho one. It's not bad. Okie dokie. Then we have a whole other 14 stratagems that come with your, if you have a Militarum Tempestus detachment, you have access to the stratagem shown here. And that is cool. Um, when it refers to a unit from your army, it must be in a Tempestus detachment from your army. So when it refers to any unit, it has to be in a Tempestus detachment. Okay, so they're being a little bit more clear about what stratagems can affect what units, which is kind of cool. Okay, let's dive in. And let me know if you hear one and you're like, oh, I wish you would have elaborated more on that one because I think it's the best or not or whatever. Okay, <clears throat> so we have point blank efficacy, sorry. When, uh, use it in your shooting phase when a Tempestus unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. At the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a, la a hotshot last gun, hotshot last pistol, hotshot volley gun, uh, within a unit within half range, add one to strength of that weapon for that attack. So it makes their crazy las gun strength four if they're within half range. So I really like that in combination with the crack shot Ioten Dragoons, which, or dra the Dragons, sorry, which adds six inches to the range of your rapid fire weapons, which means within half range would be 12 inches. So you can deep strike 12 inches away, give a plus one strength, and they're shooting with basically bolters that are minus two or minus two AP. Awesome. I love it. Um, unquestioning obedience. Use this stratagem in the morale phase. Select a Tempestor Prime or Commissar model. Until the end of that phase, when a morale test is taken for a friendly Militarum Tempestus unit within 12 of that model, do not roll the dice. It is automatically passed, which is 
amazing. Then we have Precision Drop. So select a Aeronautic Imperialis model with the Fly Battlefield role. So you're looking at any of the Imperialis flyer models. So this could be any of the Forge World flyers or a Valkyrie or a Vendetta, things like that. When a Militarum Tempestus unit with the drop ability embarked upon this model disembarks, that unit can be set up five inches away from enemy models instead of nine, which is nice. In addition, if that model moved more than 20, do not roll a d6 for each model disembarking and the model's not destroyed. So if you move your Valkyrie more than 20 inches, so it flies super fast, and then you drop these guys with a precision drop, they end up within five inches of the enemy, so you can get them in and around. If they have flamers and things like that, they can like flame stuff. I think that's really cool. I like it because they get really close. It also means you don't need to use the um, extra range if you want to get in rapid fire range. Uh, no, actually, you'd have to... Eight. Yeah, you could. You could. You don't need the extra range, um, uh, company trait in order to get within half range. You could use point blank, point blank efficiency with a bunch of flamers or with plasmas or no, sorry, not flamers. But you could get close. Essentially, is what I'm saying. Get close. Double tap with a bunch of stuff. Two CP for hammer blow. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a model is destroyed with an attack made by an imperialist model with the flyer battlefield roll. That destroyed model's unit is pinned until the start of your next turn. You halve the result of advance, charge rolls made for pin units, and when they are shooting with ranged weapons, uh, subtract one from the hit roll. I think that's a very, very powerful stratagem. Uh, it's sort of like having a Thunderfire cannon, where not only does it slow you down, but it makes you crappier at, sh at shooting me back next turn. But you, the thing is, you have to destroy a model in that unit. So it works great, like against a big unit of, say, Space Range or something like that. It's an additional minus one to hit. Or, you know, or a big unit of Eldar or whatever you're, you're trying to do there. But that's kind of cool, actually. Um, I really like that a lot. 1CP, Advanced Countermeasures. Use this stratagem before the battle. Select one Valkyrie model from your army. When you declare that model will hover, it does not lose its hard-to-hit roll. So it's essentially a Valkyrie that always has minus one to hit, even in hover mode. Or that's pretty awesome. I like that a lot, actually, because a lot of times you want to get them in like a corner and then you want to hover them to like not have them fly off the table. But keeping that minus one hit is super, super important. Tactical air control. Select the stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. Select one officer of the fleet model from your army. By the way, an officer of the fleet, super useful little tactical unit for an astronaut of the time. Uh, check it out. Read the little rule. He has a cool rule where you can pick an enemy unit and then all Aeronautic Imperialis units get like real ones to hit against it. So it's like, you can be like, shoot that thing. And then all the Valkyries and Vendettas are like, Brrr, and then they shoot them. It's pretty cool. Um, or Marauder Bombers, if you're into that sort of thing, Josh Death. Uh, <laughs> uh, when picking an enemy unit for the air raid strafing, you can measure the range of visibility from any friendly Tempestus unit on the battlefield that has a Vox caster instead of from the model. And we're rolling a d6 for the air raid, add two to the roll. So the strafing coordinates is the pick a unit within 24. However, here it is saying that with this one CP, you can measure the range and line of sight for that rule specifically within range and line of sight of any friendly Tempestus unit that has a Vox caster pretty awesome so you can have like a vox cost unit way in the back and then they can pick a unit instead of your um officer of the fleet to give to give all your flyers rerolls it means you don't have to you don't have to send your your officer of the fleet he doesn't have to be close to the front of the enemy line which is good and once per game they can pick an enemy unit to take basically d3 mortal wounds or something like that they, they do like an air raid and they can do mortal wounds to a unit and when rolling a d6 for the air raid you add two to the roll so it's more likely to do more damage and very unlikely to fail i think that's really cool so that one i think i would use a lot because it's a very technical stratagem then we have a progeny of conflict so before the battle, after nominating your warlord, select a, char a Tempestus character model that doesn't have a warlord trait, determine a warlord trait for it. Um, and you can only use a stratagem once per battle. So you can essentially pick a scion to have a warlord trait. That's awesome. I like that a lot. Killing zone. After you have shot with a Tempesta regiment infantry unit, select one enemy unit that had any models destroyed by one of the unit that shot. 
until the end of that phase when resolving an attack made by friendly infantry models against that unit add one to wound so you can pick one unit hopefully kill something then spend one cp and every other tempestus infantry model that shoots the same unit gets plus one to wound awesome so do like you know uh against marines you could go in and do like a shoot trying to try and kill someone get plus one to wound then have somebody close to do point blank range efficiency that gets strength four plus one wound and their ap2 like oh, all this cool stuff i love seeing these little combos that you can do to like just kill now they are only toughness three four armor save so it's not like they're going to stick around for a very long time but if there's something that astro military or astro the militarm tempestus can do is alpha strike you really hard so i like that a lot for one cp you have tactical misdirection uh, in your shooting phase, when the so these are the regiment specifics. We have one for the eagles, one for the dragons, one for the jackals, one for the lions, one for the uh, the Thoroit eagles, which is a different kind of eagles, and one's for the gorgons. Cool. So depending on what sort of uh, one you want. So this one allows you in your shooting phase when a unit is destroyed by an attack made by a model in the eagles unit in your opponent's next shooting phase when resolving an attack made by an enemy model against a unit other than that unit subtract one from the hit roll <laughs> um, if this unit is the closest visible unit from the army to that model hilarious so it's like aggro so you can be like you have a minus one to hit everything else in my army as long as this unit is the closest visible unit until that unit dies because you're angry at them <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh drilled to perfection use a stratagem in your opponent's charge phase uh before a dragoon unit fires overwatch until the end of that phase when resolving an overwatch attack a hit of a four plus scores a hit cool so it's a four plus overwatch not bad elusive hunters use one cp use a stratagem in your opponent's shooting phase when a jackal's unit is chosen as the target of an attack until the end of that phase, when shooting them with ranged weapons, uh, and that unit is not within half range, subtract one. So it's minus one to hit if you're, the enemy's not half range away from you. Cool. So minus one to hit for one CP. That's pretty good. And it's any unit. So that could be um, even like your tanks and stuff. Valkyries and whatnot don't have a regiment keyword. So gift from the Mechanicus for one CP. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a lion's unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. Until the end of that phase, worm resolving an attack made with a hotshot last gun, hotshot last pistol, or hotshot volley gun by model, an unmodified wound roll of a six inflicts a mortal wound on the target and the attack sequence end. So six is to wound a mortal wounds, so they basically just go straight through your, they go straight through your armor and your invul. That's cool. They, the Mechanicus gave them some really fancy guns. That's really neat actually. Just, Six and modify six to wound, boom, and it's the lions. And the lions have an extra oh, well, they have an extra AP, so I see that, that it's okay. It's just why would you give it to them if they already have the extra AP? Okay, so full charge, use a stratagem in your shooting phase for one CP when a Torox Prime from the Eagles is chosen to shoot with until the end of that phase we're resolving an attack made by that model against an enemy within 12 reroll hits so reroll hits within 12 for a torox for one cp okay fair enough and last but not least daring descent the gorgons unit from your army that was set up in a high altitude transport until the end of the phase when you set up a unit that unit on the battlefield using the aerial drop it can be more than five inches away instead of more than nine. You cannot charge with that unit this turn. So you can get them really close, kind of like with the precision drops. You could have one unit come in five inches if you're using the Gorgons with the Daring Descent and then have one in a Valkyrie jump out five inches away as well with the precision drop and have two units within five inches of the enemy, which I think is pretty neat. And that, folks is the end of the Astra Militarum and Tempestus Scions review. So let me know what you think 
down in the comments below. What are you most excited about when it comes to the new Astromotarum and Tempestor Scions? Um, of course, make sure you check out the uh, other videos in the series for the Tau and the Gene Seer Cults. The links are down in the description below. A huge shout out, as always, to the Patreon supporters, the denizens of the Dark City. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. If you haven't already and like to check me out on Patreon, please do with the link down below. Other than that, I am Skari, your grateful host, signing off until next time. Skari out. Bye.